Get out your iPhone, get out your smartphone, get on the wireless internet here, TEDx Beacon Street, you're gonna need internet for this talk, all right? So it's okay, pull out your phones, it's socially appropriate now. <laughs> uh, so while you're pulling out your phone, while you're getting on the internet, let me just go through a little bit of talk and then I'll tell you what to do with it. All right, so my solve for X is healthy humans and sustainable cities. So the question is, what do you know about food, right? So I ate some food just a minute ago in the speaker's lounge. You guys just had some food on a break. You ate this morning. Hopefully you ate yesterday, and that's why you're still alive today. But what do you really know? So take a look at the picture. What do you know about the food in this picture? Would you eat the food in this picture? Is it safe? Where did it come from? What's in it? Is it nutritious? What about the food in this picture? This is one we're more familiar with. Ah, OK, we've now landed at a nice grocery store. What do we know? We read the label. What's a label mean? You know, what do you really know? OK, so now you're in a restaurant. You just paid $50 for this gorgeous meal, and the chef's creation comes to you. And I'm sitting there saying, I still know nothing about what's on my plate. I don't know if it came from the first place, the second place, or a third place that I don't even want to know about. So who do we get information from? Meet your information broker. Right? This is the guy that steps, the, the person that steps in the middle, right? Says, oh no, this is where it was. And you know, they may be a charismatic person, and, but the, at the end of the day, they're trying to sell you something, right? They want to have your money and they want to give you food. So they'll kind of tell you sometimes whatever you want to hear. It's amazing to me that when I was little, you know, <laughs> we had more information about our toys. I knew where my cabbage patch was born, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> I knew where my Cabbage Patch was born. I knew what day it was born on. I knew the name that it came with. I knew more information about my Cabbage Patch than we do about any, any food that you ate today. I knew more about that. So this is what I want to do, right? All right, tomatoes, you're in a lineup, right? Like, we're going to ask you some questions, and we're going to get some straight answers, <laughs> right? Where'd you come from? How much, uh, how much energy did you use to get here? What do you taste like? Are you nutritious? They've asked for a lawyer. They aren't gonna, they, these guys aren't saying anything, right? So, so how did we get to the point where we could get no information about food, right, in, in our hands? So, okay, 150,000 years ago, uh, food is the maybe second most important thing on our mind, right? We're running around <laughs> looking for food, <laughs> thinking about staying alive, uh, and, and we know exactly where our food comes from, the times of year, the changes. We know when it's ripe. We know when it's dangerous. We know everything about it because food could kill us or keep us alive. And then we go 15,000 years ago. Ah, brilliant. Put food in one spot. Put food in one spot, keep it in one spot. Domesticate the crop, right? That's the birth of any city or any civilization. 15,000 years ago, food's right in the middle. 150 years ago, planes, trains, and automobiles, the birth of the Industrial Revolution. Now our food can go anywhere, right? We can live anywhere, and our food can be uh, sent to us, right? And this is the miracle of modern industrial agriculture is the fact that five years ago, half of the world's population lived in a city, right? You're not gonna be able to feed that whole population here. So this was, this was brilliant, this was working until it wasn't, right? So how's it not working? Here's the world. Here's the, the, the countries in green are food secure, right? They, they can produce enough food, they're doing all right, kinda. There's the, the rest of the world is food insecure, right? Varying degrees of food insecurity. Then if you overlay that, these countries are both food insecure and producing food to be sent somewhere else, right? So it's, it's, not, it's just, it's, it's just it's worse. So then on top of that, planes, trains, and automobiles. This is the system that we currently live with, uh, which has been working for a while. But then simple Google search, words, food crisis, right? It, it means different things to different people uh, in different parts of the world. Sometimes it means food availability. Sometimes it means water scarcity. Sometimes it means food safety. Sometimes it means getting you know, the, the, the food to a child while it's developing that doesn't stunt its brain. I mean, this is the seriousness of the problem right now. And these are, these are fractures in the system that we've built. So then what's real, this seems so big that when I look at this, I'm like, what could I do? What could anybody in this room do? I mean, it's the world, right? We gotta ask the world to fix it. So the real problem is ignorance and homogeneity. And what I mean by that is ignorance, lack of information, lack of knowledge. The fact that all of us in the room uh, may have at one point known more about our cabbage patch than our food uh, is the problem, right? And homogeneity means like our system's kind of one big system composed of very self-similar parts. So when it gets challenged, it really can't respond. So what's the answer? It's simple. Information and heterogeneity. So just meaning like 
We need to produce information and data so we can answer some questions that we have. And we need to create a more diverse set of solutions uh, in, in our food system. So when I think about things in my life that have given me a ton of information uh, and a ton of <laughs> different applications, I think of computers. So this is the state of agriculture today, right? We have a very limited amount of people with a ton of knowledge, right? Working a system that nobody understands. Uh, and so this is back when the user and the programmer were one and the same. We're in the 1950s. Let's go forward. So I'm, I'm in the media lab, right? Crazy people running around every day. Stallman, right? Stallman, 1970s, comes in and says, general public license for software. Ah, open source software. Now the software got extracted from the machine. Now people could work on the software and trade it with each other, and that's the coder movement, right? Coder movement was born. Next guy, Neil Gershenfeld, right, creates machines for people to make things. So now he's taken the machine side and put it into the public realm. Now you have the power to manufacture in your house. So everything human-centered. So coder movement, software, maker movement, hardware. What are we doing now, right? Grower movement, food movement, biology. It's going to be the, the response of software, hardware, to life systems, things that are alive is the next step. So what do we need? Something that creates information, right? A fab lab. We need a food fab lab. But not just a food fab lab. We need to share the information about the things we create. And then we need to give access to people. And this would create kind of a, the vibrancy of a diverse food system. OK, first on the food fab lab. So we looked around, uh, and there wasn't one on Earth. So we had to go to Mars. Uh, no, so Mir Space Station, Mir Space Station, about 15 years ago, started developing this technology called aeroponics. Now, let me just debunk something. So hydroponics, blah, blah, blah. It's just water technology. It's just irrigation, right? There's different kinds of irrigation. This irrigation mists root systems, no standing water, no soil, supposedly uses 98% less water, and can grow a theoretical 20 times faster. So then your minds are just blown, and you're like, I don't even understand what that means. <laughs> so we wanted to understand what it means, right? We, we were just like you. We were sitting in the lab, and so we went to Home Depot. We went to Bed Bath & Beyond. And we were the only people in the hydroponics store trying to grow lettuce, right? So like, <laughs> we, we built this, we built this a couple of years ago, and we were like, ah, cool, okay, we get it. There's some root things, and there's some, some thing on top, and most of the time it died uh, while we were trying to give it water. But we were like, cool, small, we get it. Then we took it up a notch. We're in a closet at the Media Lab, right? We're able to produce food inside of this closet to feed 300 people once a month. Good enough, good enough for, that's about the people of the Media Lab. And we made food donations uh, three times a month to local food shelters. There's no pesticides, no chemicals, uh, no need to be washed. Then we said, let's get it out of the closet, right? Let's bring this thing to the world. So we created a device for sharing the information that we were gathering. Through research and development of hydroponic or aquatic production, the lab uses an array of network sensors and computerized automation to deliver the most efficient means of growing plants without the need for soil. So I'm going to show you the farm. So get out your smartphone, get to the internet, and uh, we'll go to cityfarm.media mit.edu, right down here. It's really big. We're going to see if the, you guys are going to crash my system. I know it. But essentially, inside of that farm that you saw, we have an array of sensors, CO2, O2, temperature, humidity. These are climate recipes, right? If you think of the way that things taste, they only taste the way they do because like, the world's in a box, right? Like You've got the world in a box with some gas and some minerals and some water. So that produces plant expressions. So those expressions are a result of their inputs. So is anybody there? Can anybody see this thing? All right. Username, rethink. Password, four-letter word begins with F, and you want to eat it, right? It's food. Uh, so, <laughs> so put it in, uh, and then we'll get on to the next screen. How many people see this? We got a quorum getting there. One, two, three, no? Anybody? There we go. Starting to come in. All right. We are now, and you are now farmers. You are now farming. You just don't know it. You are inside the brain of the farm at the Media Lab. So hit monitor system. 
This is set up to be added to uh, from a virtual machine anywhere in the world. So basically, imagine that container just got dropped off in a thousand other places. There would be a thousand farms listed here. You click main system because we only have one, right? So main system. Now select water sensors. Go down to water sensor board three. OK, that means that it's somewhere in that computer for food. Uh, there are some sensors that are giving me information, giving us information. All right. Then click on water sensor board three. What you see right now is real time. And so <laughs> I don't know actually how the farm is doing right now, so I'm going to get on my phone. And I'm, so how many people are here with me right now? Right? There's a few. If you guys can show it, share it with your friends. So there seems, I'm looking at it right now, and we have a problem with our pH. Right? Our pH is in the red. So I'm going to call my buddy uh, at the, my other farmer. I'm going to put it on speakerphone and see if he answers. <laughs> so. What this is meant to do is, while I'm talking to you guys, or when I'm traveling all over the place, I get worried about my plants. I care if they're doing OK. right? So I see now, and you see, that our pH is kind of off. So we're going to farm together real quick if Dan decides to answer his phone. Uh -huh. Hey, Dan. Hey, Caleb. Hey, we got a problem with the pH in the farm. Oh, no, what's happening? Yeah, it's too high. Can you go into the farm and fix it? Absolutely. So watch your, watch your screens. This is just a static image, by the way, that I had to put. So if you're with somebody with a phone, so Dan's going to go into the farm, and he's going to adjust the pH. We report data every half second from anything that that crop ever experienced. So Dan, have you been able to do that yet? Yep, I just adjusted it. All right, now see if you can find the pH on there, the one that says pH, the little dial, and see if it starts moving. It should start moving pretty soon. <laughs> right, there you go. You just farmed. You're all farmers. This is awesome. All right. All right. So, so the farm is OK now. Everyone can put away their smartphone. Oh, no. You, actually, you can't. Keep it out. Keep it out. OK. So you can also see how it's been trending throughout the day. So for those of you without the farm, without the phone, you know, you know OK, temperature, pH, whatever. We know it all. We know what's going on. Now go back to the beginning. Right? This is going to be fun, too. Go back to the beginning, and you're going to select Browse Plants. OK? Anybody, everybody put down their smartphone, and now they're trying again. But browse plants. Then select plant types. These are the plants that are currently growing in the city farm at this second. Anything on here means that it is in the farm and it's growing. So select broccoli, because we have a ton of them. <laughs> all right, broccoli. These are all the independent broccolis with their own unique IP number inside of the lab right now. So these broccoli can talk to you, right? So these broccoli, if you select one of the broccoli, just pick one, doesn't matter. What you get is a plant profile. So these are downloadable progress bars. It doesn't really matter. It's just our plant is starting to tell us what it needs, when it needs it. It's saying, you know, I'm getting a sunburn. Turn down the lights, right? We're getting social with our plants. We're finding out a lot of information. You just saw the beginning of the plant Facebook. Those are our first users. <laughs> You know, pretty soon they're going to be able to friend you. Your food will friend you, uh, and you'll friend it back, right? Because you'll know where it was, when it was, and what's in it. So to review, the personal computer, the ugly first personal computer, that's where we're at, right? We've created a tool. It's an open source tool, open source data, hardware, and software just to get it out there, just to create capacity. We've also created the first uh, kind of mainframe, right? So the mainframe, maybe you can ask it more questions, but it's the same thing, right? There's a container. It's, it separates the environment. Then there's a chassis. That chassis has components like hydroponics, aeroponics, whatever ponics you want to put into it. And it just produces data for everybody to bank on. So remember the world connected by strings. That was kind of the problem, right? So what if this world now has a networked intelligence, right? What if those little computers and the big computers for food are out there talking to each other? Well, really not, the, really not that far from reality. Every place on this map, this is not a, a randomly generated map, although it kind of looks that way. These are places that have reached out to me and said, we want this. We have something to contribute. We want to be in control of our food and our food information and our knowledge. We want to build capacity. We have something to add to this. Please bring this to us. So that's what we're doing, right? This is the beginning of this access for information, access to technology. So the internet, uh, you know, I often think back and I'm like, man, I wish I was there for the beginning of the internet. I could have done some crazy stuff at that time, right? If you feel that way, this is the beginning of the food internet, right? Right now, you're in it, you're seeing it, it looks weird, but you know, like think of a garage with a, a, somebody playing with circuit boards. That's what we're doing here. You can be involved in this. So we're, we just planted it, right? This is going to be disruptive, 
but not catastrophic. So the interesting thing is this will provide solutions for food in schools, jobs in cities, startups, blah, 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 all this good stuff, right? And in the meantime, while we're banking all this data and we're doing all this neat stuff, we'll be figuring out how to feed the next two billion people. So what does this look like? You know, this is literally what it looks like. Geneticists, manufacturers, governments, engineers, astronauts, tech companies, policymakers, biologists, restaurants, nutritionists, elementary school people, plumbers, families, scientists, universities, you name it, contributing information, right? We've got to get a diversity of thought into food, and this is how we're going to create it. So now, in the future, when you have this crazy information broker that, that tries to give you some food, right? And you're like, ah, I don't know anything about it. These got little vintaging labels and stuff, you know? Like, so I pull up my phone and I pull up the, the, the city farm information and I'm like, no, you know, I'd rather have a tomato that was like a little more nutty or like I'd like to have a little sweeter one or actually I'm into spicy this month. So I'd like to pick the vintage from the kindergarten that's growing this from downtown and have that delivered to me. You will be in, the, in absolute control of your food. You'll be able to see how much energy it used, how much water it used, what pesticides were applied, everything. That's myself for X. Healthy humans in sustainable cities. Thank you.